Hello, hello, welcome to HimDev Development, where we are preparing the best tutorials to make your mobile application development easier and more efficient. The goal for this tutorial is following. In the portfolio screen, we'll create a bottom navigation bar with two tabs to switch between the two subpages of the portfolio, portfolio tutorials and portfolio gallery. We'll add another option to switch between portfolio subpages using the page view component. We'll implement bottom navigation bar and page view widgets in collaboration with slivers. Finally, we'll add an ST scroll view to the app. Procedure. First, we open our existing application from the previous tutorial and we open the portfolio underscore page dart file. This will be our starting file for this tutorial. It is important to note that this tutorial is especially related to the previous one where we created sliver widgets and learned how to work with them. In the first half of this tutorial, we'll more or less just prepare and modify the code and in the second half, we'll work on the bottom navigation bar and page view widgets. We launch our application from the previous tutorial to see the starting point on which it will be based. First, we create two subpages of the portfolio. In the pages folder, we'll create the file portfolio underscore tutorials underscore sub underscore page dot dart. In it, the stateless widget portfolio tutorial sub page. Next, we create the portfolio underscore gallery underscore sub underscore page dot dart file in the pages folder and a stateless widget portfolio gallery sub page in it. In the build method, we only return the text gallery for now. We go back to the portfolio underscore page dot dart file and move the contents of the portfolio page class to the portfolio tutorial sub page class. In the build method, we return custom scroll view instead of the scaffold widget. We'll change the portfolio page from stateless widget to stateful widget because we want to define certain variables and change their values in this class and that's basically not possible in the stateless widget. In the build method, we return the scaffold widget where we add the portfolio tutorial subpage widget to the body attribute. We can see in the console that we don't have the tuple 2 library imported, so we return to the portfolio tutorial subpage widget and import the missing libraries. We run the application. We can see that the app still works the same way. In the build method of the portfolio tutorial subpage widget, we extract the sliver app bar widget into the stateless widget and we set the title argument to tutorials. We then define the underscore title parameter to the constructor of this widget. And we add it to the flexible spacebar. We can move this widget to an external portfolio underscore sliver underscore app underscore bar dot dart file in the components folder. And then we import it in the portfolio tutorial subpage widget. We run the app to make sure everything works the same.
we extract the sliver fix extend list widget into the underscore build sliver content method. Now we can copy the build method and paste it into the portfolio gallery subpage class. We change the title to gallery and we import the portfolio sliver up bar widget. We create the underscore build sliver content method which returns the sliver fill remaining widget. Into the sliver fill remaining widget, we define the text gallery with the bold font weight and we set the font size to 20. Then we wrap it with the center widget. In the Pages folder, we create a Portfolio folder. We move there our three Portfolio classes to have a cleaner project structure. Since the Portfolio page widget is triggered by clicking on an item in the Draw header, we need to edit the import in the shop underscore draw.dart file. In this way, we have prepared two new subpages, Portfolio Tutorial subpage and Portfolio Gallery subpage. And now we'll learn how to define the bottom navigation bar and page view widgets. Let's get started with the bottom navigation bar widget. We go to the portfolio underscore page dart file. In the underscore portfolio page state class, we define the underscore pages list in which we insert our two subpages and also the variable underscore selected page which represents an index of the selected subpage. First, we set it to the initial value of 0. In the scaffold widget for the body attribute, we add the underscore pages list here and set the index to the underscore selected page variable. We run the application to see if it still works correctly. Subsequently, under the body attribute, we add another scaffold attribute, bottom navigation bar, into which we insert the bottom navigation bar widget. Bottom navigation bar has several attributes. We start with the items attribute, where we put a bottom navigation bar item two times. For the first item, we define the icon to the video and we set the title to tutorials. And for the second item, we define the icon to the image and we set the title to gallery. We launch the app and we can see the bottom navigation bar is not responding to the tabs yet. We set the selected index to our underscore selected page variable using the current index attribute of the bottom navigation bar. It is important to note that the items in the underscore pages list must have the same order as items in the bottom navigation bar for the items attribute. In the bottom navigation bar, all the desired effects and animations have already been implemented, but we still need to define a click listener for these tabs. Therefore, we define an on tab attribute that has a tab click index as an argument and we set this index to the underscore selected page variable. However, as we already know, in order to redraw the widget, we need to wrap it with the setState method. And with this, we have added the bottom navigation bar widget to our app. Let's go through some of the navigation bar options. We set the background color to the items. However, we can see that nothing has changed in the app. This is because the navigation bar type is set to fixed value by default and we must to set it to shifting value to see the changes. And now we can see that each navigation bar tab has its own background. We can also set the overall background color of the navigation bar.
also the size of the icons. as well as the size of the text. Ok, that was just to show the possibilities of the navigation bar. The next step is to add page view. Therefore, in the scaffold widget for the body attribute, we remove the current code and we insert the page view widget there. The page view has the attribute children in which we insert the underscore pages list. We run the application. We have completed the sliding between our sub pages, but switching the tabs in our bottom navigation bar is still not working. Therefore, we add another page view attribute on page changed, which has an index of the currently viewed page and we set this index to our variable underscore selected page and of course we'll wrap it with the setState method. As a result, the display of active tabs in the bottom navigation bar works correctly while sliding. However, nothing happens after clicking on the individual bottom navigation bar tabs. This is because we have linked a change of pages in page view with bottom navigation bar but not vice versa. So we need to link a change of tabs with the page view as well. And for that we define a new variable underscore page controller. And we add this variable to the page views attribute controller. Page controller is used to manipulate pages in the page view component. In our case, we'll use its method to change the pages in page view and even use the animation option using the animate to page method. In bottom navigation bar, for the on tab attribute, we call the page controller method underscore page controller dot animate to page to change the page view with a 300 milliseconds animation and a linear animation effect. We run the app and we can test the current functionality. In fact, the application is fully functional at this stage. However, each page has its own top bar, sliver up bar. If we wanted to have a common top bar for both subpages and to define page view only for the rest of the page content, we could use the nested scroll view widget. In the portfolio underscore page.dart file, we wrap the page view widget into the nested scroll view widget. Specifically, we insert the page view into the nested scroll view attribute body. Another attribute of the nested scroll view widget is the header sliver builder attribute, in which we create our portfolio sliver up bar widget. But now we need to set the title of the top bar based on which sub page is active. First, to test the functionality, we use just the if else statement. We launch the app. We can see that we have created the portfolio sliver up bar using header sliver builder. Also, switching the titles works correctly. However, we now have two sliver up bars. So we go into the portfolio tutorial subpage class and delete the portfolio sliver up bar widget from the build method. Then we enter portfolio gallery subpage and also we delete the portfolio sliver up bar widget here from the build method. We launch the app and we can see that the top bar is working properly. However, using an if else statement is not the most elegant way. We'll use the tuple to class where in our underscore pages list we add the title to the sub page widget. For the portfolio tutorial sub page widget, we'll add a tutorials title. And for the portfolio gallery subpage widget, we'll add a gallery title. Then we can set the title for the portfolio sliver up bar according to the index of the current subpage. From the underscore pages list, we select the current item according to the underscore selected page index and then we return a variable item1 of the tuple class 
which represents the title of the particular subpage. We still need to edit the children attribute in the page view widget where instead of underscore pages list we now need to return a specific widget from the underscore pages tuple list. To do this we will use the map function to return a particular widget using the tuple variable item2. And then we create a list using the toList method. However, to be a widget list we need to define the return type of the function map to widget. So this will return the widget list. We run the application and we can test the whole functionality. And with this is our seventh part of this first series of Flutter tutorials completed and of course you can find the complete source code on the GitHub as well as on our website himdeve.com where you have a detailed description of everything we went through in this video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you. Bye bye.